I want to speak on the theme this morning, the wonders of thanksgiving. What thanksgiving can do for the one who makes thanksgiving his lifestyle. So let's begin from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So we are told by God to thank him in everything, in every instance. So let's begin this morning. What is thanksgiving? We are told to give thanks to God in all circumstances. Why? Because thanksgiving is the will of God. So the question is, what is thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is recounting the past acts of God. Recounting the past acts of God. That is, as a child of God, when you begin to go into your heart, go into your mind and begin to think about how you used to be and where God has brought you. Then from all what God has done for you, you begin to thank God. What? How? By recounting, remembering where you used to be. For example, like some of you here, how you were young. Maybe some of you had challenges in terms of your health and God heal you. Maybe some of you had challenges in your marriage and God help you. Maybe some of you, you were expecting God to bring your family from somewhere and God has done it. So when you begin to remember all this, then you know it is not you. For example, Psalm 103, Psalm 103 verse 1, David said, My soul, praise the Lord. All my inmost being praises the Lord. So David was saying, I am a king today. But I used to be a shepherd boy. My father had sons. But when Samuel came to my father's house to anoint one of my brethren to become a king, I was not called. I was in the forest. My mates, my colleagues, my friends were animals. I didn't have suits. I didn't have nice clothes. I only have a catapult. Lions and bear and wild animals came to attack me because of the sheep. But God help me. I was able to deliver the sheep from the wild animals. They could not kill me as a shepherd boy. When I went to the battlefield, Goliath was there. I went there as a young man, as a teenager, to see how my brethren were doing. I heard the voice of Goliath. To cut the long story short, I was able to kill Goliath without a sword. God, who took me from being a shepherd boy? God, who took me and helped me to kill Goliath? He has made me a king. And so my soul bless the Lord. And don't forget all the things he has done for you. That is what Thanksgiving is all about. Unfortunately, most of us 
we easily forget. It is dangerous to forget. It is too risky to forget. So, David said, my soul, pray the Lord, and don't forget all the good things. Watch this. In most cases, as human beings, we have a challenge. God deliver us. We easily forget. And we are not satisfied. All the time. Maybe I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe you had a challenge. And God help you. But today, you have another challenge. But you are forgotten God who help you. So don't take God's grace for granted. Remember how you used to be. And what God has done for you. And begin to thank God. So in case you are here. You are hearing my voice. And you know, and you know. God has done something for you. Can you put your hand to Jesus? Give it to him. Oh, you are sitting down. Please, just stand up and thank Jesus. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Yes. Do it, do it. Yes, thank God. Yes, give it to him. If God has done something for you, give it to him. God is good. God is good. Please take your seat. Thank you very much. So, Thanksgiving is recounting the past acts of God. Not only that. What is Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is appreciation appreciating what God has done now here was a man the man the Bible called them the ten lepers Luke chapter 17 verses 11 to 17 Luke 17 11 to 17 for the verse 15 number one there were ten People with leprosy. Jesus healed them. The nine people, I am sure they were Jews. So to them, we have healed in so what? They didn't remember. But the one among the ten who was a Samaritan, one among the ten, went and appreciated Jesus for healing him. Luke chapter 11, the verse 15. He went and prostrated. And he said, Jesus, thank you. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. So what is thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is appreciation what God has done for you. If you are here and you know God has done something for you, somebody shout praise the Lord. Oh, shout praise the Lord. Shout praise the Lord. Listen, the leper, she went, he went and worshiped Jesus. You are here in Canada. Look at your environment. Everywhere food, F-O-O, the food. You go to church everywhere you eat. Wow. Look at your roads. Everything here is mwah. It's too nice. And some of you, you are living in your comfort zone. When it is summer, you don't go to church. When it is winter, you don't go to church. So what is your problem? When there is small snow, you complain, Pastor Jerry, I can't come to church. There's small snow, more, more snow. No, the, the weather is no good. It's too cold. I can't come out. When it is summer, and then you need to come. I am going out with my family. Wow. 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 So, in the winter, you have excuses. In summer, you have excuses. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? One way to thank God is to worship him. And you come here, you must make it intentional. It is not a gift. It must be a choice. Make a decision 
to come here whether winter or summer to come and praise the Lord for God is good and if you know what worshipping God what it brings nobody will edge you hey in Ghana some people walk they walk kilometers to go to church and you see young men young women walking in the sun they are sweating going to church and you are here with your car driving with air conditioning look at your church auditorium wow look at the chair you are sitting on this is like a yellow break chair look at that one and then summertime in the morning the weather is 23 degrees. Well, I want to go down. I want to go to do some shopping. Sunday morning. You don't do shopping Sunday morning. Sunday, the last day. Come to church and give Jesus time. Come to church and show your appreciation. The man who was a leaper appreciated God who has healed him. He went and worshipped him. So one way to one way to show your appreciation to Jesus as you are thanking him is to come here. Make it a decision. You can go to shop from Monday to Friday. Sunday, don't go to shop. If you want to go out with your family, do that Saturday or if possible, come to church after church before you go out. Come and let's worship God. And if you do that, it simply means you are not ungrateful being. Can you imagine Jesus asks the leper, I heal the ten. Where are the nine? What does it mean? It simply means every day God expects us to appreciate him. God is looking for you from me to appreciate him. He's expecting us to thank him. So, anytime you begin to give excuses about the weather, it simply means you are taking his grace for granted. And if you take God's grace for granted, you will be grounded. To, if you take his grace for granted, you will be grounded. J R O U D E D grounded. Now, listen. I don't know here. Let's go back to Africa a bit. Some people, and the truth is, apostle, it appears human nature everywhere the same. Character. Here, where some people, they will say, "Well, uh, Bishop, I am not well. I can't come to church. The weather is too cold. It is rainy." Monday morning, when it rains, they still go to work. Tuesday, when the weather is bad, they still go to work. The same people here. When it is a winter, you say the weather is not good, you go to work. Summer, you go to work. Why don't you go out with your family Monday? Why don't you do that? Because you, if you do that, you can't get money to pay your bills. But don't forget, it is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich. The blessing. The blessing. The blessing. Let's appreciate God. What is Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving number three is to ascribe all the glory to God for how far he has brought you. Thanksgiving is ascribing all the glory to God for where we are. James chapter 1 verse 17. James 1.17, the Bible says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly light. Who does not change like shifting shadows? What does it mean? Anytime you see anything good, if it is good, it is God. If it is good, it is God. So when you see good things in your life, it is not you. It is him. 
So when we say thanksgiving, it simply means you look at your life and you say, you say to yourself, it is not me. Apple Victoria, it is not me. I am alive because it is God. Watch this. In case you are here and you are counted among the living, it's not because you have a good doctor. It's not because you eat well. It's not because you take good care of yourself. It's because grace, the grace, it's because the weight of God is behind you. So you are alive because of God, not to you. So when you begin to identify in your life any good thing about you, give it to God. If your children are doing good in the education, give it to God. If your wife is treating you well, pastor, give it to God. If your husband is helping you, Victoria, give it to God. Every good thing you see, it is God. So thanksgiving is ascribing all the glory to God for how far he has brought you. Can you imagine this boy talking to you? A village boy. I was born by an old man. My father had three wives. My mother was the third one. My father had 13 children. 13. Happens to be number 12. I began life at the age of seven going to farm to do some labor work with my hands. I walk in my life, no shoe, no shoe, no slippers, barefooted for 17 years. I didn't have anything, only a piece of cloth. Today, look at what God has done for me to be here. So, as I stand before you, I, don't, I have not done anything to myself. I have never contributed anything to myself. But it is all about Jesus. If you know and you agree, it's all about Jesus, shout, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And if the hands belong to you, give it to Jesus. Give it to him. Now let's see if this is Thanksgiving, then let's begin to consider what are the wonders in Thanksgiving. When I thank God, what happens to me? Number one, when you thank God, you have access to divine presence. Thanksgiving allows the Thanksgiver to have access to the presence of God. Psalm 100 verses 4. Psalm 100 verses 4. The Bible says enter his gate with thanksgiving and is caught with praise. Give thanks to God and praise his name. Listen. Anybody who is a tanker T-H-A-N-K-E-R a tanker if you, immediately you become a tanker you have the presence of God. And when God is with you, who can be against you? Can you imagine Joseph was a prisoner? Genesis chapter 39. But as a prisoner, he was still a tanker. Joseph didn't have any reason to complain. No, he has many reasons to complain, but he refused. He chose to magnify God. So, from the time he put in charge of his household, and all he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. What are we trying to say? Because Joseph was a carrier of God's presence, though a prisoner, God was with him. One wonder, one thing that comes to a thank giver, a Christian who thank God more, you have access to the presence of God. So you do yourself harm if you, are, if you fail to thank God. Now, you know why we don't thank God? Because number one, because of ingratitude. We easily forget. We don't thank God also because we complain a lot. 
We are not content with what we have. Please, those of you who are here by the grace of God, it is good for you. You go to hospital free. What are you looking for? Good roads. Even if you are not working, the government will help you a bit. What are you looking for? I don't know. Human beings, we are not content. So, enemy to your thanksgiving lifestyle is number one, ingratitude. Number two, forgetfulness. Number three, complaining. Anytime you complain, you complicate your problems. You complicate your life. Complainants complicate their life. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. Do not mama as they mama. Do not complain as they complain. And the destroyer destroys them. So one thing that Thanksgiving can do for you as you thank God you have divine, you have access to divine presence. Number two. Every Thanksgiver, when you begin to thank God, you transfer your life battles to the hands of God. Anytime you begin to thank God, the battles you have, you change gear. God, take over. How do I know? Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Acts 16, 25. Apostle Paul and Silas, they were in prison. About midnight, Paul and Silas were in prison and they were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. As you continue reading, they were in chains. Can you imagine? The people have not sinned against God. They have not stolen anybody money. They have not done anything evil. The only mistake they did was that they were preaching the gospel. And they were in chains, beaten up. But in their chains, they began to thank God. And when they did that, they transferred the battle and God took over. So the wonder in thanksgiving is that as a child of God, if you ignore all the challenges and you begin to thank God, you are saying, God, I can't do this. Come and fight my battle for me. In case you are here, you want God to fight his battle for you, stop complaining. Stop complaining. Stop sharing tears. Begin to thank God. Apostle Paul did it. And God came in. So when you thank God, there are more wonders. And one is that, here you are. You have challenges. But you begin to thank God. Father, I thank you. Father, I bless you. And as you do it, continually, genuinely, you transfer your life battle. And when God takes over, nobody can stand. So, for example, as a person, by the grace of God, as a pastor, I pray more. But in my prayer, prayer life, 90% of my prayers is all about thanksgiving. For me, I don't know why I'm alive. Some people are younger than me. They have died. Other people are incapacitated. For me to be here is grace. So when I sleep and I wake up in the morning, the first word is, Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Jesus! Because I know it is all about Him. My friends, if you want God to fight your battle for you, stop complaining. Stop sharing tears. Stop talking to people. When you go before God, just magnify him. Just bless his name. And as you do so, heaven will rise. And when God rises, your enemies shall scatter. Thanksgiving brings God into your life. And when you thank God more, God takes your battle. Not only Apostle Paul, but when you go to 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 29, chapter 20, I beg your pardon, 2 Chronicles 20, 19 to, 19 to 25. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 19 to 25. The Bible says, Then some Levites from the Kohites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. When you continue, what happened? God began doing something. Early in the morning, they left the desert of Tekoa and they set out. Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah, and to the people. Have faith in him. As we read, continue to 25. God 
gave direction. And he himself came and fought for Judah and Jehoshaphat. What did they do? They didn't cry, but they began thanking God. Though there were challenges. I don't know what you are going through. I want to encourage you. I want to urge you. Stop talking to people and begin to thank God. Can you imagine? Some people, I don't know here, but some people, when they go before God, let's say, they, they begin, God, look at me. Some people, they go before God and instead of them thanking God, they begin to complain, even before God. God, look at me. Look at my friends. I am better than them. But they are going better, better than me. Father, look at me. What is it? Somebody said, God, when you said you blessed me two years ago. You didn't do it. I read your word. I saw that small blessing. If you don't bless me this year, I won't save you again. So, they became offended. <laughs> God has offended them. And watch this. If God say God has offended you, who is going to help you? So, instead of you becoming offended by God, choose to magnify God. Choose to bless God. The third wonder in thanksgiving is that the more you thank God, the more you stay in health. I don't know here. My Bible said Proverbs 17, 22. Proverbs 17, 22. A happy heart. A cheerful heart is good medicine. Because listen, you can't be a complainer at the same time a tanker. It is not going to work. Where thanksgiving is, there's no complaining. So the more you thank God, the more you have joy in your heart. Listen. And by the grace of God, September will be 54. When I was like 15, 20 years ago, you go to hospital. And when you hear people who have blood pressure, who have diseases, they were the aged, the old people. But today, you go to hospital to pray for some people, 25 year people, young people have blood pressure. Why? Because of stress. Don't worry about things you can't change. You didn't create yourself. God brought you. As a time giver, have health. So one way to stay in health is to thank God. The more you thank God, the more God comes on your life and the more you have become heavy. Don't forget, to be worthy is to be heavy. And most people, they begin to worry they get themselves worried and weary. And they themselves buy sickness. The more you worry, the more you invite sicknesses. So one wonder, one thing that Thanksgiving can do for you, the more you thank God, the more you can stay in health. Do you want to stay in health? Do you want to stay in health? Sickness is a bad thing. So if you want to stay in health, be happy. Be happy. Be happy because God is in control. You didn't create yourself. God brought you here. Now before I conclude, the question will be how can I maintain attitude of thanksgiving? How can I maintain attitude of gratitude? One thing you can do any situation that comes on your way, confront the situation with thanksgiving. No matter what you hear. No matter what you see. So, to maintain attitude of gratitude, you must confront every problem with thanksgiving. Don't forget, we began in my preamble, 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Can you give it to me, please? In everything, give thanks. Give thanks in all circumstances. So how can you maintain attitude of gratitude in every problem, in every challenge confronted with thanksgiving? When you go to hospital, the doctors diagnose you and they give you a wrong report. Say, Father, I thank you. When your husband or wife or children begin to show attitude, say, Father, I thank you. Make it your lifestyle. Listen, to be a thanksgiver is not a gift, it's a choice. Make a choice to be happy. Listen, 
to be happy is you. Don't allow anything to take away your joy. For the God we serve is a good God. In my closing remark, don't forget that the people of Israel, the Jews, God, by his power, took them, delivered them from Egypt. They were going to Cana. What happened? Numbers, numbers, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, numbers. The fourth book of Moses, chapter 11. Moses was commanded by God to select 12 spies to go and three and look at the land and come back. When you go to chapter 14, Numbers chapter 14, verse 1, the Bible says, The whole night the Israelites they cried. Why? Because to them they decided that they can go to the promised land. Instead of them thanking God who has saved them from the hands of Pharaoh, they began to complain and they complicated their problems. So though God took them from Egypt, majority of them could not enter because they failed to acknowledge the power of God. For you, for you to see your promised land, for you to see the next level, for God to change your level, begin to maintain attitude of gratitude. It doesn't matter what you hear. It doesn't matter what you see. God is good all the time. Make a decision to thank God. But don't forget, one way to thank God more for a time is that in his house, whether winter, whether summer, whether fall, come here. So please, talk to seven people. I want you to stand up, talk to seven people. Don't make a skill about the weather. Every Sunday, come to church. Talk to seven people. Seven people, don't make excuse. Don't make excuse. Don't make excuse about the weather. Don't make excuse. Don't make us excuse. Don't make excuse. No excuse. No excuse. No excuse. No excuse. Don't make excuse. Don't make excuse about the water. Thank God. 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 So listen. God is here. Listen, listen, I want you to do something for me, please. Apostle, with respect, I want everybody to stand up, please. I read the Bible. I saw something from 2 Chronicles chapter 15, 12 to 19. There was a time there was no priest. So the people of Judah, they backslided. But when they called into action, they made a vow to serve God. With all their hearts. And when they made that, that, that vow, God had it. And the Bible says, God gave them rest, run about. First, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles 15, 19, there was no war. I want us to make a vow right now. And the vow is simply, we want to say, God, from today, we won't worry again. We are going to thank you. The second vow is that, God, it doesn't matter whether it rain or shine, in the summer, we will come to church. In winter, we will come to church. We want to make a vow. Are you understanding me? Listen, the Bible says, when you hear the word, do it. It is not enough to write quotation. It is not enough to listen. The most important, become a practitioner. A doer. John chapter 13, 17. John 13, 17. The Bible says, if you know these things, Blessed are ye if you do them. So I want you to make this vow, not me, for, for me, but to God, because he's here. When the apostle was leading the worship and praise, I love the apostle, your son, and the worship team. It was fantastic. So I wasn't surprised when you took over and you said the presence of God is here. Champion life, God is here. God is in the house. And because God is here, I want you to make a vow to him. Now from today, apart from I tell, the government will make announcement. Today, it is too bad. Nobody should go out. That is different. That's different. See, I don't live here, but I know that one. <laughs> That's different. Yes. But for you to intentionally 
give excuses. Hello, darling. Let's go to McDonald's. No. Let's go to more. No. We are not going. So what am I saying? Please give me Second Chronicles 15. I want to see what we want to do now. So that this will be the end. That first Corinthians, I beg you, Second Chronicles chapter 15. Let's go there. The people made a vow. And I want you to make. So this vow is not something this village boy is telling you to do. Correct. No. Let's go to the verse 12. Uh, let's go to Second Corinthians 15, the verse 12. Verse 12. Verse 12. Okay. They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, with all their heart and soul. Let's go. Verse 13. 13 to 15. Go. Thank you. And all who would not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, were to be put to death. Whether small or great, man or woman, let's go. 14. They took an oath to the Lord with loud acclamation. So what are we saying? Don't, 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 don't say that. Say, I say, no. Say, I, Apple Victoria, I stand here and I vow from today, no weather, no excuses. They took an oath to the Lord with loud acclamation, with shouting. Please, I know you are gentle. Canadians are gentle. But please, this one, no gentility. No gentility. Now, can you imagine? Give me the verse 15 and 19. I love the Bible. Verse 15. All Judah rejoiced about the oath because they had sworn it wholeheartedly. They sought God eagerly and he was found by them. So the Lord gave them rest on every side. Rest on every side. Wow. They made the vow from their heart. It was not mouth. They meant what they said. They meant the vow. And God, who was able to see the future, though they have not started, he gave them rest. Last verse, verse 19. There was no war. Verse 19. There was no war. Can you imagine? So when you made this vow today, the next 39 years, there will be no hospital, there will be no sickness, there will be no challenges for 39 years. No, 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 no. All right. So the first vow, Father, from today, I will make it intentional. Thank you in every circumstance. So let's go. Say, my father. Please mention your name. I, my Cladofo, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'll make it my lifestyle to thank you, God. It doesn't matter what I see. It doesn't matter the circumstances I go through. So God help me. Somebody shout amen. amen. Now the last vow. The last vow. Now please raise up your right hand. Say in the name of Jesus. I, my Cladofo, Father, I make a covenant. My Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, from today, I will never give excuses when it comes to serving you. Whether winter or summer. I will come to church. So help me God. No more excuse. I will serve you. The rest of my life. Somebody shout amen. Give it to God. Give it to God. Now I want to pray for you. Because the Bible says. God give them rest. I am standing here. By the grace of privilege. The anointing over the head of our father. So I'm standing in the name of Jesus in his platform. So together in our, the spirit as a son to the father and to the mother. And he, because he is here and my mind is here and you are here. Shall we close our eyes as I pray for you? Father God in the name of Jesus.
your children has made a vow to save you. As I lift my hand, let the unction, let the fire of the Holy Ghost minister to your children. Solve the problems. In the presence of God, in the fire, I can feel the fire of the Holy Ghost. Touch your children, Father. Touch your children. Yokes are broken. Sickness are leaving you. In the name of Jesus. The fire of God is in the house. I can, I can send the spirit of God, the presence of God. God is touching you here. He's touching your life. He's touching you. Receive the touch of God. Receive the touch of God. Receive the touch of God. Jesus is in the house. Touching men and women alike. Receive rest. Rest. God is giving you rest. Receive rest from Jehovah. Rest from all your challenges. Rest from all your problems. Because you have stood before him. You have made a, a vow to save him. The God we serve is unchangeable changer. He did it for the children of Judah. Today is your turn. Receive rest in Jesus name. Amen.